So thank you very much, Ian. And um, I, <coughs> excuse me, but in this case, I will read the first text that I prepared just to be in time. And um, I try to introduce the uh, session and what we thought about it, what we thought to discuss and to, uh, to do. Um, you already read the abstract of the session. I will repeat it very, very uh, shortly, uh, reading uh, rather fast. That is, throughout history, the Mediterranean Sea was intertwined with human society and the relation that we find somehow also to represent in a less uh, direct and straight way than normally with the talk image of the Mediterranean. And uh, communications was globally enhanced as soon as coastal, coastal and green island communities developed the networks with each other in Orient hubs. Or hubs. The sea was crucial for leaps in the relational universe with cultures getting in contact over wide distances with different uh, social structures coming to have relations. At first, international aid emerged and we began in the late Bronze Age, during which people intensely moved their ideas, technology, and public spread. Through time, the Mediterranean Sea acted either as a barrier or as facilitator of exchanges, contact, conflict, power, the warriors, often changing to traders, and vice versa. And there is the recent idea of pirates and other things going around. The traditional excitement scholars experience over enhanced communication processes asked, however, for proper analysis, as communication was never an even in the beginning. Local communities made decisions as to which foreign objects adopted that or reject and how to react to connectivity. Bordering regions must also approximate sites, sometimes show drastically different records of long-distance contact. This agency and decision should be dependent on a variety of criteria, processes of innovation and connectedness reflect the normal situation within a shared seascape, how can we explain the opposite? The aim of the session, therefore, is to measure acceptance of and resistance to outside influences within Mediterranean and coastal settlement and their immediate hinterlands um, with an open time frame. But most of the communication, as you will see, will be mainly on this late Bronze Age. Sorry. So we have, obviously, problems of sampling of the in phases in which data are not evenly distributed or known, and our knowledge is dependent on severe sampling problems, we face difficulties in understanding whether a specific cultural manifestation appears in an isolation because of facts dependent upon the archaeological record itself, or because it is the effective reflection of specific behavior and no shared communication. Communication may be contact but not diffused. Uh, this uh, the um, fact is uh, pointed out by some extraordinary monuments, such as the impressive Starkey's altar and Monte Lacotte in Sardinia, which could be a reflection of faraway Eastern Mediterranean contacts, but may as well be the result of local processes regarding a particularly complex monument. Then, <coughs> as archaeologists, uh, we may refer generally on to pottery. This is not strictly Mediterranean because I will show you something about northern Italy. But um, as soon as the record seems safe enough, uh, the distribution of raw materials and objects, their technology and shape or typology, have been seen as one of the most immediate markers for communication and for the introduction of specific contacts. In the typical case of pottery, such a widespread product of really for historic societies, uh, underlying the fact is more or less explicitly the idea that emerges continuously that pots are somehow people, or that pots bring messages from people to people. In Italy, we found a somehow relevant situation in the connections, for instance, between southern and northern Italy during the Middle Neolithic, when pots related to the cerebral productions of southern and central Italy are found in two specific areas of northern Italy, that is, Emilia and Angel Valley in Trentino, apparently reflecting specific communication. They show formal affinities, but seem to have been locally produced, and therefore should not correspond to the trade of their content. The directional contact could be connected to a movement of female persons across wide spaces, apparently associated, the, the, associated to these spots in the tombs of Northern Italy, or to the presence of shared costumes or rituals. Anyway, the communication seems oriented in a directional way, excluding other communities present uh, nearby. And when we come to the Mediterranean and to the situations like during the late Bronze Age, in one of the most intense phases of communication, 
through the Mediterranean, the mass of data available bring constant consistency to the existence of differences in communication, even between close by sites. The presence of specific spots with abundance of Mycenaean pottery are the easiest way to describe the effects of contacts, both commercial ones involving uh, possibly the exchange of pots as goods and as byproduct of exchange that these containers for their traded content. Or they may be, sorry, product, byproducts of this, a, a exchange that is the containers for the traded content. Or they may be also collateral events of exchange, sorry, collateral uh, events of uh, uh, exchange being left or gifted in order to support and facilitate trade. A more complex uh, uh, fact, uh, culturally very interesting, is the local production of pots. Uh, sorry, I wanted to go back. I go back. Um, uh, the, the, the local production. Um, another a more complex cultural interest, in fact, is the local production of pots typical of another area of the Mediterranean. The interpretation of this behavior is more often the transfer of population remaining stuck to their habits or the adherence of a cultural group to the system of beliefs of the other. The first case that we invoked, the uh, people moving and remaining attached to their original cultural behavior, for the handmade burnished ware or barbarian ware in the Aegean and Eastern Mediterranean as a transfer of people from Italy or the Balkans to uh, Greece and Crete. Um, but it is probably assumed also for the local production of Sardinian shapes of pottery in Sicily um, in the single site of Cantel. The second case, that is the adoption of an external tradition, is generally invoked for the start of the local production of uh, italo mycenaean pottery in southern Italy um, and uh, in Sardinia mainly, but also in Thessaly, like at uh, Castanas and uh, near uh, Thessaloniki. Uh, even if some authors have also suggested that, that this could reflect instead the transfers of populations from the Aegean to a marginal parts of the Aegean world as part of the late Hellenic Third Sea turmoils. The differences in interpretation reside in the quality assumed for the pottery very often. Where it is a beautiful and culturally impressive manifestation, it is easier to find proposals assuming a driving force from the supposed superior tradition onto the less sophisticated. But it is also a factor of spread. If an incoming tradition derived from another cultural milieu shows a more even distribution into the landscape, being documented in a multiplicity of sites and likely assumed by a multiplicity of people, it is seen as an acculturation fact more than as a massive income of population. Therefore, uneven communication would be mediated by specific transition information whose most relevant and pervasive aspect would be the transfer of information holders that is equal. Social factors driving communication. The crucial point is that communication, far from being a factor of expanding as a wildfire, is instead more often nucleated and transferred through the social hub. There are social factors of contact and border that mediate communication. The existence of, of directional communication is a mechanism clear in every narrative about movement and contact such as in the Odyssey by Homer and in the Kula Ring definition by Malinowski, which is a clear case for uneven communication. The opposing factors of alliance and contrast direct the consolidation of such contacts and the definition of borders or may do it, constructing both bottom up and being also directed top bottom. The top bottom consolidation is typical of hierarchy social systems. For instance, with vertical clanic structures driving relations through leaders acting as entrepreneurs and linking through peer policy interaction. The bottom up relation can act fairly well in a scarcely hierarchical structure as a factor in the traditional system, mainly in open social environments. A tribal or even some chiefdom societies with experience wide bodies acting in a corporate way and possibly open to contact and communication, in contrast with other groups inside the society. Anyway, the situation is much, much complex, and we need more uh, details, and I hope that this can come also from the, uh, the communication that we will have during the 
uh, this day. Uh, so, uh, what I, I wanted to, to remark is that also other models have been invoked. Uh, one of the models that has been, for instance, invoked by Anna this is theory for the for, uh, I will return to this in my communication for the uh, fall in communication apparently during late life TC with Sicily and the Orient Islands, which were instead before a, 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 an area of very intense communication with the Aegean, uh, has been seen as a model of reaction and rejection for an, uh, in a traditional uh, cultural historical frame of interpretation. She is uh, so direct contact between Vice and growing politics, uh, inserting in the maritime hubs and political centers of uh, Sicily, as followed by a consolidation of the, this politics with a strong Mycenaeization, and then a crisis and cultural, polit political, uh, and the population confrontation that led in the end to the fracture of communication. So, the, uh, these kind of processes are just some of the examples that uh, I can see in terms of what we can uh, go on discussing today. Uh, mm, what I wanted to uh, remark just to end uh, is that communication hints at the existence, uh, for me at least, and maybe also for Ian, that we shall see in the discussion, of specific groups which are involved in communication and of socially defined groups. Furthermore, the idea that communication is a widespread and homogeneous factor is more often than not an illusion, and one should seek in any case for the socially relevant groups that stay behind the apparent communication. The ways contact is spread may have plenty of things to say in terms of the complexity of the societies involved. We think that through this idea of how communication is spread and managed and organized and uh, defined by the contact between groups, we can maybe understand something about the complexity and the structure of the society more open and bottom up or closed and stop bottom or what else. So this was my maybe a little bit confused introduction, but I hope that uh, uh, can help you to understand what we did mean when we spoke about uneven communication. That is, we have not to assume as a general fact that communication is like uh, a wildfire spreading all around a single point of contact. So, please, yeah.